Gates is getting a lot of hate recently. Someone told me to go on any of his social media and read the comments, so I did. It seems like a lot of people are displeased with Mr. Gates, with hundreds of thousands of bad comments and they are being deleted live as they come in. We've all been seeing a lot of Bill lately. After all, he was the only person in the world to have the foresight and predict what is happening now in his TED talk in 2015. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. More recently, the Gates Foundation was so worried about a pandemic happening, they staged an exercise drill in October of 2019, only five months before COVID-19 hit the world. It began in healthy looking pigs, months, perhaps years ago. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. The sickest required intensive care, many died. <laughs> but of course, this could be two complete coincidences. Maybe he's passionate about pandemics because he is influenced by his father's life work. Call it some sort of daddy issue. Bill Gates Sr. served on the board of Planned Parenthood during the group's infancy. A rebranded organisation birthed out of the American Eugenics Society. Senior would continue his eugenicist efforts by becoming instrumental in the formation of a new philanthropic brainchild called the William H. Gates Foundation in 1994. The company merged with the new Gates Learning Foundation to create the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2000. Today, it's the largest private foundation in the world, with over $46 billion in assets. The group is focused on many areas that drive continued work across the world. These activities have given birth to new forms of technological, eugenic endeavours. The organisation is simply continuing the Gates family legacy of trying to control the world's systems, including the areas of technology, medicine and now agriculture. All you have to do is to look at what areas the Gates Foundation gives money to. A quick search and you will find it in three key areas. Education in the US, global health and agriculture. Agriculture is what may be inspired Bill in 2010 to purchase 500,000 shares in Monsanto, valued at more than $23 million. Monsanto's has a bad reputation when it comes to health. Evidence that GMOs cause disease has been piling up for decades as the list of countries banning their imports and cultivation grows. Well, Bill Gates is actually continuing the work of Monsanto. Bill Gates is still imposing and forcing GMOs, which is a failed enterprise. And he's not just imposing GMOs, he's taking what has failed and rejected my, by governments. My government threw the BT aubergine of Monsanto out. Bill Gates resurrects it in Bangladesh. But maybe Bill didn't know that, right? I'm sure he had nothing but the best intentions. In 2006, an article in The Economist magazine introduced the term philanthrocapitalism to describe a trend sweeping philanthropic institutions, the tendency for a new breed of donors to conflate business aims with charitable endeavours, making philanthropy more cost effective and financially profitable. So how could anyone criticise philanthropists that give a fortune to the needy? Should we just accept the version he tells us on face value? 30 years ago, about 70% of the World Health Organization's budget came from what were called assessed contributions. These were contributions made by member states and that were given to a pooled fund that the World Health Organization had jurisdiction over dispersing. In the past 30 years, we've seen a significant shift in that now 70% of the World Health Organization's budget comes from what are called voluntary contributions from bodies like the Gates Foundation. Those voluntary contributions can be stipulated for specific causes and programs that are, that are indicated and directed by the donors themselves. So we're, we've seen a problem that the World Health Organization's priority setting 
has been in many ways distorted and in some ways perverted by the rise of voluntary contributions, which at face value seem irreproachable, because how can we argue against giving money to something as important as global health? But at the same time, the way it's been donated has been done in a way that might be causing more disruption, more unhelpful disruption at the World Health Organization than is useful. In a way, Mr. Gates, he's become in a way a sort of unofficial global health czar. He in some ways does act as a sort of honorific diplomatic envoy on behalf of corporations like Coca-Cola and to some extent Monsanto in sub-Saharan Africa, and he was never elected or appointed to do so. So it does raise some serious questions surrounding accountability. Gates has proved there is a far easier path to real political power, a way that allows unelected billionaires to shape public policy in ways that always generate favourable headlines. Charity. Not only do you have the Gates Foundation doing this, dispersing three billion bucks a year, but you have the Waltons, you have uh, abroad, you have a, a growing number and if the Boston College folks are correct, then we're gonna have another 25 of these mega foundations run by two or three family members. I mean, this seems to me to be a threat to democratic institutions, particularly in public policy making, where if a Gates can have a major influence on American education policy, what can 25 Gateses do to American policy in other fields? Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates stepping down. Gates announced in 2008 that he would step away from Microsoft to focus on his efforts on philanthropy, describing his philanthropic approach by creative capitalism to connect the promise of philanthropy with the power of private enterprise. The result has been a new model of charity in which the most direct beneficiaries are sometimes not the world's poor but the world's wealthiest, in which the goal is not to help the needy, but to help the rich help the needy. But still, we all heard the news in the past that the Gates Foundation eradicated polio. Surely that's a good thing. Because some people think Gates is eradicating polio. Polio campaign, eradication campaign, has been ongoing since prior to the inception of the Gates Foundations. Polio was still a problem to a certain extent in developing nations, but not nearly as much as a problem of certain of other health ailments. It was something that was seen as, an, as possibly an easy success. What Mr. Gates has done has taken forward the polio eradication campaign in a way that commands political support and attention, but aren't actually a major priority in poor regions which would prefer to have more freedom and flexibility to combat ailments that they find to be more, to place more of a burden on their populaces. I can hear some of you say, maybe it was just a part of Gates' early strategy to invest in such an easy success with polio in order to get the world attention on him and to make him an authority and a major figure in global health. Let's talk about where we are as a country right now, Bill. What, what should we be doing right now in the middle of this storm? We should give him the benefit of the doubt on this one too. <laughs> and since everybody is giving Bill such a hard time, I implore you, dear listener, to consider everything I mentioned to be nothing but a series of coincidences. I don't want to enter debates about Bill's intentions regarding vaccines, microchipping, tracing, ID 2020, Monsanto, his relationship to Epstein, Covid, or any of the few controversies surrounding this man. I'm just going to look into where his funding is going and maybe this will put things into perspective. Through an investigation of more than 19,000 charitable grants the Gates Foundation has made over the last two decades, according to The Nation magazine, it has uncovered close to two billion in tax-deductible charitable donations to private companies, including some of the largest businesses in the world, such as Glasgow, SmithKline, Unilever, and IBM. They always say, follow the money. Obviously, the Gates Foundation gives away billions of dollars to many public and private organizations, 
and I am positive some do some good in the world. However, when I look at the number of these organisations, a lot of them seem very familiar, mainly because they are all involved in one way or another with the current situation that we are all in now. And we've seen these faces and logos all around the news for the last three months. The World Health Organization received $4.6 billion in donations, $3 billion to Gavi, the vaccination alliance with the goal of increasing immunizations in poor countries, $870 million to John Hopkins University, which provides data, statistics, maps, and COVID resources. 280 million to Imperial College London, which created the wonderful computer models that predicted and miscalculated the spread, impact and death rates of this pandemic. So based on these models, we decided to lock down. 243 million to Oxford University for vaccine research and development. 40 million to the London School of Hygiene, led by Professor Chris Whitty, England's Chief Medical Officer. And the list goes on. Some of you are wondering why there are so many TV broadcasters on the list of private companies receiving donations. Just you think about it. Bill needs someone to spread the good news about all this work, so the Gates Foundation adds the media to their list of charity. You would think the funding support will go to broadcasters in poor countries to educate and promote health. However, if you do a small search, you will see the donations went to major broadcasters. The foundation has given over $250 million to media companies and other groups to influence the news. Some of the recipients are broadcasters such as NBC, ABC, MSNBC, The Guardian, and let's not forget the $53 million given to the BBC. The lack of critical voices around the Gates Foundation doesn't really signal, as the media tends to assume, its legitimacy and its widespread acceptance. It's a sign of the opposite. It's a sign of an organization that's seen as so, that it's seen as so powerful that few dare approach it. You would have thought if you are spending billions to do good in the world, the results should be felt far and wide and have a direct positive impact. There would be no need to pay people to say good things. All the information is out there. We just need to organize it and share our resources, educate others and encourage those who see injustices and attacks on our humanity to speak out. Only then we could see the full picture with solid proof and if there is any wrongdoing, we would be in a position to take legal action. Think about it. I don't know if there is any wrongdoing happening, but if there is, who would dare speak against 46 billion? Is it okay for billionaires to hide behind the label of charity, to escape any government regulation or interference? Should we blindly trust these billion dollar foundations that are more powerful and have a higher GDP than a lot of the nations around the world, simply because they say their intentions are good? Is there too much power in the hands of these unelected billionaires in shaping our public policy? I have just shown you the beginning of the rope, so please go and do your own research and make up your own mind. I don't know what Bill Gates and his foundation are really up to, but I have one last question. How many more coincidences do there need to be before it's mathematically impossible?